Check, check, check. All right, all right. Do one more. All right, cool. Well, here we go. And cut. Cut. <laughs> Alright, welcome to another bonus episode. Probably the most eagerly anticipated bonus episode, the one most asked for. Well, this one and the one about Bjarne's equipment. Uh, this one is about my rig, the 50 Project rig. Essentially the thing I drive and live in the entire winter. Um, the one that gets me all around North America chasing classic lines. So, let's get into the truck itself. The truck to start with is a 2019 Ford Ranger. It's the Lariat edition with the off-road package as well. Uh, the Ford Ranger, I really enjoy because first off, I like trucks. I've always had trucks since my very first truck, um, very first car, I guess. And uh, they're just more utilitarian than I find for myself and my life than vans. And for this one, I've upgraded and kitted it out to be able to live in and drive around the country with. Uh, the Ford itself, it's got really good efficiency. Uh, it's got a ton of power. It's a turbocharged uh, four cylinder, uh, 10 speed at that. So it's quite efficient. And it's actually got a lot of room inside for being such a small truck, uh, something I haven't found in other trucks of its size. And for me, being 6'2", it really helps. Uh, beyond this off-road package that I talked with, I did do some upgrades to this truck to make it even more ready for this project and for kind of my day-to-day -day life. So let's get into that. Okay, so the first upgrade I did was on suspension. Um, I went with a two and a half inch lift, but not just a two and a half inch lift kit. I went with some damn fine suspension. So I have a Radflow suspension kit and Radflow essentially makes race level off-road suspension and they make it custom for your truck. So you can dial in your weights and dial in your needs and they will make it custom built for order. So it's like a boutique suspension shop. Uh, what I've found already is, yeah, I can fly through potholes at like 60 and not even remotely feel them. Uh, it's an amazing suspension package. It's not just some cheap lift kit. It's actually for performance and going down on the east side, going off on dirt roads, driving up in Canada. Um, it truly gives this thing a really good level, smooth ride. Um, on top of that, I have Total Chaos Fabrication upper arms. Uh, um, those UCAs, the upper control arms, are again made custom specifically for this. It's essentially upgraded versions of that that control the entire suspension. Uh, Total Chaos, again, is like one of the best manufacturers of gear like UCAs. Um, so went with that on the suspension kit. For the tires, I went with my beloved BFGs. I think every single truck I've ever had, I've run BFGs, specifically the KO2s. Uh, I think there was actually one year I didn't buy BFGs and I really regretted it because they wore out in like 30,000 miles and these things last like 50,000. Um, and I got them in 34s and it fits perfectly for this Ford Ranger. Um, I don't have any rubbing, any like any sort of issues with it and yeah looks good clears a lot of the dirt and boulders that i'm driving on in off-road situations now what i did to this truck to make it livable for the entire winter so uh the truck itself i've got the four door with the five foot bed doesn't come in a longer bed and the four door four door is really nice because i can keep a lot of stuff in here and store it but most of my stuff is in here the gfc camper I had one last year, if you remember, and I fell in love with this thing. Um, it is by far the most utilitarian truck bed living system I've found. Essentially, I needed two things, uh, gear storage and a place to sleep, and this absolutely nails it. These GFCs are so well designed, so well built. I mean, they were built for off-road racing, um, but they are like they're built to live in and still have a truck. It's not like putting a big camper in the back and you don't have storage. You have a good living situation, but you don't have other options. So the GFC is what I went through and I'll take you through this. Um, one of the best things about it is access to all doors, um, open it up and access everything 
from the side, from every itch angle. Um, for instance, I want to get to my backpack. Oh, it's right here. Stored up on this little line I put up or oh, an extra water bottle, my hats, all that kind of stuff. I can reach in from the side instead of having to crawl in the entire time. And then we'll go into the back. This is essentially the camper. Um, I have this kitted out specifically for my needs and for what I kind of learned from last year. So I wanted this deck right here, which I built this summer because I wanted a place to essentially live and stand in and have all my space here, but then I needed gear storage. So this summer I went through this process of just kind of dreaming up what I exactly needed and built this system. The first and star of this is my drawer. Um, this is essentially where all my gear is. This drawer I built myself. I used uh, half inch, three quarter inch uh, steel tubing and skateboard bearings to make this. It holds my entire body weight, holds like five, 600 pounds. Uh, it w rolls really well and smoothly and, and I was able to customize it better. So, you know, for my gear, I use things like uh, this Thule bag, which I will then pack and travel with, but this is where all my kind of gear goes in. So I've got ice axes, all my skins and whatnot, all easily accessible right here. So when I get out of the truck, I can just pick what I need for the day. Um, if we're traveling without my truck, then I just take this Thule chasm bag out, unload some of my stuff, and then use this for my travel bag. So dual purpose, which is a big key to this whole thing is having dual purpose. Here, I have things in these open Thule containers. So I didn't want more bags. So I use these Thule gear organization system that they sell in their kind of new updated camping section where they are essentially making gear for van life and for living out of your car. So I have all this stuff here, so it's accessible. I've got my ski clothes, my gloves and goggles, sunglasses, my normal clothes, my base layers, and all that. And the best part about this is once I close this, and let's say I'm inside, everything's closed up, I can access it through here. So I wanted to be able to have this fully enclosed and get into this stuff from the top while still being inside. So I have two kind of trap doors on this floor where in the morning, if I want to get my ski clothes on, I don't have to get out of my truck, open this up and put my stuff on and grab it. I can just stay in the truck, open this trap door and start reaching around for everything. Um, the rest of my living stuff, a lot of Yeti products because they make good gear storage and organization and of course coolers. So I just use a small 20 liter, have some Yeti ice in there. That's where my refrigerated items go. This is uh, the Thule Go box right here. I've got all my essentially cooking equipment. So it all goes in here. And then on top of it, I'll end up cooking. Um, I've got Yeti bag uh, back there for all my, um, all my food essentially. And then we've got in the back, my favorite thing, which is the Yeti silo. It's hold six gallons of water in there. And that's my almost most needed thing is water. And the most important thing about it being insulated and made by Yeti is the fact that it doesn't freeze because we're mainly sleeping in freezing temperatures, not the opposite, trying to keep our water cold. We're trying to keep it unfrozen. So from there, I'm able to uh, load up my water bottles, cook with it, make coffee, and it just kind of lives in the back. Uh, a lot of people ask on this GFC about heat. Uh, it's kind of like winter camping and I do have a heater, but it's not something that like runs often. I'll turn it on for 10 minutes in the morning when I'm cooking, put my clothes on. I'll put it, turn it on for 10 minutes in the evening, dry some of my stuff out, get warm, get ready for bed. Uh, it's a little propane, little buddy heater. Propane puts off a lot of moisture, so you don't want to be running it full time. Plus this whole system gets pretty warm really quickly because it's so small. Um, now I'll kind of show you essentially the more living situation because I don't sleep on this bed. The bed is up here. So let me pop this. Alrighty. This up here is where the magic happens. And by magic, I mean sleeping and snoring and farting and nothing else. No other magic. 
just that. Um, one of the coolest features of this is I can get into this bed from inside. And even with this bed right here, I have full standing room on top of this. Um, so I essentially can stand up, move the bed out of the way, you do all my cooking, get all my gear on, and get the bed reset and get in from the inside without ever having to open any of these doors. So essentially once I'm inside, close up all the doors, I'm in here, and this is my camper. This is where I live. Um, yeah, that's kind of the GFC. Uh, the other questions I get about it is how is it sleeping in the winter? It is like uh, just kind of like winter camping, though this new material they have is really breathable, so I'm getting less condensation. Um, there's good venting with it. Um, when it's warmer, you can open this up into cabana mode and just have this whole thing open. You have this just beautiful place to hang out high above your truck. It's definitely a lot easier than any rooftop tent because you have to get outside, back inside. You don't have standing room. I have that. The, the whole package that this GFC camper is only 250 pounds, so it doesn't add a ton of burden to your truck and efficiency and your suspension. I just find it to be the best system yet. I have a truck, um, if I remove this in the summer, that's normal, but, and I have a enclosed lockable truck bed, but then I also can sleep in it. So it is like the coolest and most efficient and kind of cost effective sleeping system that I've found for a single truck. I love this thing. Cool, so on top of the GFC, uh, I've got the GFC bars up here and I was able to mount a few different things. Uh, the first being this Thule ski rack. Um, last year I had my skis in the bed, but this is a five foot bed, so it doesn't quite fit the skis. But in a certain way, it's actually really good because I can kind of get my skis out of the entire equation for storage and put them on top. Uh, the other thing I have is a ZAMP solar panel. So I'm able to now power my stuff. Um, the ZAMP solar panel, 100 watt, it does everything for what I need, which is just pretty much charging GoPros and phones and stuff like that. Uh, if you need to do more charging, you might want more, but the ZAMP 100 watt solar is nailing it for me right now. Um, let's take you into this Thule ski rack. The Thule Extender Snowpack, which is really, really useful for a situation like this, and I realize it's really useful for any car situation. So the best thing about it is I can hold three skis, but let's say I wanna get those, uh, those POW skis in the back, open this up, open that up, slide this over, and oh yeah, I can just grab these skis. Ah, my Alpinism skis, I'll grab these today. So we're going ski mountaineering. Uh, it's a super nice way to be able to essentially grab the skis that you want, um, especially for a system like this where the this whole thing is pretty high off the ground and uh, I do have a little step so I can easily reach things, but it's pretty high up there. So having the extender is absolute must. Pop that. There we go. The last thing I'm gonna mention is one last modification, which is this Thule Evo wing bar and this Thule wind deflector. So the GFC sits kind of high off the truck and I wanted to increase the efficiency, essentially decrease wind drag. So I put this Thule wing deflector on there. Um, in my tests with it and without it, it seems like I've gained about at least a mile a gallon because of it. Um, plus it decreases noise, um, decreases bugs hitting the GFC, which is kind of nice. It goes over the truck. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the last modification to my truck. So yeah, welcome to my truck, which I have named Azulito, which kind of roughly, but doesn't really translate to Little Blue, because my old big truck I named Mas Rojo. It was almost a tribute to Mas Rojo. That was a giant Ford F-250. This is a small blue Ford Ranger named Azulito. Okay, last little bonus clip at the end. So, this is my rig, but I got Bjarne's rig too. It's pretty sweet as well. Ram Promaster. I'm not gonna do the whole tour right now, so maybe we do another bonus episode about it. But, look at this thing. You got Hand, a wood stove? Hand built himself. Mm -hmm. Like, look at these tables, these chairs, look at all this stuff. Table swinging. Kitchen. Yeah, coffee. Boys. Bed back there. Yeah. Nice Next bed. time. 
Oh, there's Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. What's up? <laughs> Look at this thing. That thing is sweet, yeah, huh? Yeah, come in and check it out. <laughs> yeah, jump aboard. Yeah. Jackson Hole Cribs. I built it. You did? All Look of at it. this wood. This is amazing, dude. It's great. Yeah, every little detail. Got a little sink. Nice. Some water. Coffee actually just brewed, so it's time to fill it up, you know. Oh, I could use some little refill, actually. Yeah. Look at these, the, the wood. The live edge, it's so nice. Nice, brother. Yeah. This, okay, but I this thing it. is it, is all time right here. It's so rad. <laughs> and it's smoking out the top and you're like, ah, oh, excuse me, sir, your truck's on fire. <laughs> like, no, it's good. Yeah, this thing is good. Here, here's a nice refrigerator. Oh, yeah. Kind of... Wait a All right. Next time, we'll show you this whole deal. <laughs>